right, good evening guys, hope you're doing good. Hope the day's gone very well for you. Uh, so yeah, we're starting off pretty much almost like a new series now uh, of really overview sessions going over FX, educational sessions, and just, just bringing, bringing the whole community together, really. My plans for these sessions going forward is to really push these out to me on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, uh, and we're going to pick more of a time going forward as well. So this one this evening, obviously we're pushing out to 9pm, but going forward, uh, we want to get them on a structured time every single week as well, uh, to looking at probably 8pm on that as well. So, my audio is weird, yeah? You hear me? Sounds crackly, I think, Paul. Yeah, yeah, sounds really crackly, bro. What about now, Bert? Not really, Paul. It's just when you talk, it's like he's talking right into the speaker or something, maybe. So it sounds like. Oh, let me pull this out quick. Sounds better now, mate, yeah? Yeah. All right, yeah, fantastic. So, yes, yeah, so we want to do calls, you know, multiple times a week. It's it's not not feedback. So, yeah, fantastic. Do calls a couple of times a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, going through probably 8 p.m. So we'll, st we'll structure uh, a day and a time where we can do it best going forward. But, yeah, obviously, I'm going to introduce Jake tonight. He's going to go through uh, most of the education side and covering just some of the setups that he's been looking at for, for this week and everything like that. And, yeah, in the future, I'll cover some bits once Jake's finished off as well. And uh, if Cal wants to cover anything that he's looking at or anything like that, we could do that as well. So, yeah, Jake's obviously been running it up for probably about a year, year and a half now. Really dived into his FX uh, really hard over probably most of this year. So, yeah, I'm going to throw it to Jake uh, and he's going to go through some of his setups. Amazing, well, thank you very much for that, Rory. Um, yeah, guys, so before we get started, um, I, I don't know, you know, I'll probably introduce myself. Jake, I've been, you know, involved in trading for quite a while. Um, involved in a bit of a signal group before I got to the drawing. Obviously, I've, you know, just decided to find my passion with trading, so I really delved into my education. Now, my my style of trading is institutional, but I also trade Wyckoff um, schematics as well. So, for those of you that probably don't know what Wyckoff schematics is, we probably won't go into detail too much tonight. Um, you know, but if I'm going to start, I think there's possibilities I'm going to start rolling these calls out on a weekly basis. So if there's anything you want us to go over, covering Wyckoff schematic supply and demand and stuff like that, we can do. I know Carl's on the call. I know he's trade supply and demand as well. I don't know if he trades schematics, um, but we could definitely get into that as well, guys. But personally, myself, um, if I just be able to go on a quick screen share. Can you see my screen? All right, Rory, yeah? That's perfect, brother. We're looking at gold yeah. here. Amazing man. So, personally, myself, I've only I've not even really traded this week at all. Uh, I did send a couple of trades out into the chat in, into the chat on on Monday. Uh, I'm just going to cover a, a gold setup from Sunday night overview. Uh, I've got a couple on the watch list. As I say I'm not really looking at anything that uh, you know. The ones in blue, I'm going to just go over what of um, potentially you know we sent into the chat um, this week. And a couple of the orange ones there's potentials for the week coming ahead, right? So I'm just going to start off on, on the daily time frame for gold. So um, for me, what's actually given me breakthroughs is understanding where we are in structure. Now, you could potentially say that this is bullish and then we've broken structure. Okay, now we're bearish. Now, if we actually zoom out and understand that every market, every market condition has impulse moves and retracements. Now, the higher time frame that you want, the obviously the stronger the retracements are going to be. So you know, for someone probably jumped on this call now, possibly going to be thinking that, you know, gold's bearish. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's a bearish order flow on this retracement. But the idea overall is gold is still bullish. We can trade the retracements, we can trade the impulse moves. Um, but yeah, so looking on the daily, you know, gold is bullish because we've got this, this high that's pushed in the low. Okay, then we've broken that high here. So for me on the da daily, gold is bullish. Um, okay. So where we are right now um, on the four hour, um, I'm potentially looking for a tracement. Now there's some key areas that I've been looking for, for gold to retrace to, understanding where we are in, in current market conditions, looking for to sell gold on a retracement, okay, then to continue buying back up. Now I've had some areas marked up on gold for quite a while now. So we've had these highs that were taken, these highs were taken on uh, the 10th of November, now, we've got some rest in liquidity below these lows, okay? So, potentially understanding that we're in a higher time frame bullish environment, but we're in a supply, so we're probably looking to retrace on a bearish order flow back down to potentially trading with momentum again on a bullish time frame. So, understanding that, you know, I'm going to try and position myself in for a sell, okay? So, 
Um, you know, we've got these laws, relatively laws on here. So we've got this little wick down here. We, we haven't touched, really touched there, but we've got a wick down here. So I would definitely like to see these laws get taken. We've got some imbalance down here. Now, the other thing that really caught my angle was we've got this rest of liquidity down here. Now, these laws have been sitting chilling since 8th of March. So you, know, you can understand there's going to be a lot of liquidity in there, a lot of retail traders buying from this area. So for me, you know, I'm looking, obviously understanding I want to trade the retracement. I want to look for the sell. Okay, but being mindful, obviously, where we are in higher time frame structure. Um, so I'll actually share this out on, on, on a Sunday night market overview. Now, for me, because I want to target these laws, I was actually looking at this area. So I've seen there was a lot of trading from an institutional standpoint. You, you need to be mindful of where, you know, big money's came into play. Now, big money leaves clues in the market, um, you know, with the... Big money definitely doesn't buy from support lines or sell from resistant lines um, and stuff like that. So big money is going to leave a clue, i.e. they're going to leave institutional candles, they're going to leave imbalances, they're going to sweep highs and lows uh, and stuff like that as well. So I had seen that, um, you know, we had these low, we had these equal highs up here. Okay, so we had these equal highs up here. Um, we've had a manipulation that's took these highs. Okay, institutions came in, took these highs, okay. So I thought, okay, this is a cool area to, to look into for the POI. But as I'd seen this up candle that swept the highs also, um, you know, I think there was a small imbalance on here on the, on the lower time frames, and it's then broken structure on the, the intraday time frame. I thought, okay, this looks like a nice area to get into. But on Sunday, when we were looking at this, we were in this condition now. If I drop down onto the 30 minute time frame, we can actually see. Um, that price has actually whipped into this candle. Now, you're probably thinking, why, why do I have these blue lines and black lines? I'm going to get into these a little bit later, but these, this is called um, Sessions on Chart by John Fibonacci, the educator in IM Mastery Academy. He's created his own um, indicator, so to speak. So the blue line is London open on price. You can see at the bottom, 8 o'clock in the morning um, through to uh, 4.30, and then you've got uh, New York opening at 2.30, through to nine o'clock at night, okay? So going on from that, so obviously we've had this wicking to this institutional candle, so that's telling me that's mitigated. So I need to be looking further down to be getting into my entry. Now, understanding wake off and supply and demand areas. Now, to the normal person, this could possibly just look like a consolidation area. But I understand, obviously reading the books, going through the content, especially Zach McDonald uh, and I am Mastery Academy, he's helped me massively with understanding structure what's maintaining structure, accumulations, distribution, schematic supply and demand areas has, has helped me massively. Okay, so I understood that this was actually potentially going to be an accumulation schematic, uh, not, sorry, not an accumulation, a distribution schematic on the lower time frame. So and we're on the 30 minute now, we'll just drop it down for you. So similar process to what we went, to, went from before on the one hour, we've got the similar process on the five minute. Now we've had this area of this consolidation, we've had this big wick up, took these highs, okay, I've actually mitigated out of an area from London opening session and then dropped down. So I'm thinking, okay, we're in bear, I want to sell down, we're in bearish order flow on intraday timeframes. I'm trading a retracement on the daily time frame. Okay, so let's just see if we can position ourselves. Okay, so we've seen that we've had London price action open here. We've came down, we've took some relatively, you know, um, uh, minute time frame structure lows. Okay, we've came, we've consolidated a little bit. So if I play this out, Okay, we've had what we'll, what we'll obviously look into. A lot of people might not understand this, but this for me isn't the cleanest, but is it a distribution schematic? Okay, so we've got a buying climax. We've got our ST. Um, we've got our upfrust action that's took this. We've got our UTAD. Okay, so understanding this, I'm now looking for an entry to get into here. We've now broken lower time frame structure. Understanding breaker structures on lower time frames. So if we obviously have we're in a bullish environment and we have, um, you know, a, a break of structure in the one minute, it's not necessarily going to mean that we're changing character and we're moving back bullish with a higher time frame. Because the lower the time frame, the structure break on the lower time frame, it's, it's a probably, it's a more of a weaker um, structure break, I suppose, if you had a structure break on the daily, four hour and one hour as well. But understanding, you know, where I'm at in the highest, higher time frame, I'm looking for the sell, position myself, I've seen this distribution schematic, we have a cause and effect for entry, Okay, so we have these, this push up, swept the highs, we've swept some lows. Um, okay, so I called this out on, uh, on Sunday night. 
Um, I actually didn't take the trade because obviously Sunday night you're heading into market open. I personally don't trade on a Monday. Um, you've got obviously the Asian session and Sydney session uh, at that time as well. So obviously I'd mark the UTAD. Okay, we've then pushed down. We have a test of the UTAD. We've tested supply. Okay, we've came down with broken minor structure on the um, on the on the three minute there. Okay, so I'd target this imbalance area for an entry. Go down, push our position on there. We've just covered the high. Yeah, cover the, the body of the candle and cover the wicks. Okay, and then I targeted, was it down here? Okay, so if we just play this out now, I'm actually a bit gutted to be honest because it was actually a really nice trade. Um, just play out on the higher time, on the higher time, so I make it a bit faster. Take a while to come in, but we didn't get into our POI. Now, this actually missed the entry by two pips. If I look into this area, it actually missed the entry just by a minor two pips. Well, three pips there. Uh, uh, nonetheless, it's a you know learning curve, one for the journey, uh, one for the journal, so to speak. Target was this down here, this imbalance down here. Let me hit take profit. Fortunately, it didn't get into the trade, um, but there you go. You, you can't win them all, can you? Now, GJ was one. That I put in and actually I put it in the chat, but I actually did hit stop loss now. I've actually reevaluated my POI. And you know, there's there's gonna be some confluence in what I'm gonna go on and say in, in a minute as well. So what I was looking for on GJ was basically trading a bearish order flow. So if we go on to the four hour, okay, what I had seen was although price was bullish. It, you know, majorly bullish. There's nothing we can say about that. It was bearish. Okay, we ran clean break at this high as well. I had seen that this area had been tested multiple times. Okay, this area had been tested multiple times. Now, from an institutional standpoint, there's a lot of liquidity down there. Excuse me. Now, the reason I was looking to sell this, although we're in a bullish environment, is because this was the law that pushed in a new high. Okay, so understand the structure. Now, this low pushed in that high, so we've got the low of the trading range here, the high of the trading range there. Okay, now if we just run, we run a horizontal array from the body to body, we can clearly see that we have a close below that, that area. So that could initiate, you know, a bearish, bearish um, order flow. Okay, so understanding that, I'd looked for, okay, right, so... Where's institutional came into play? So we can see what we've just seen before on, on gold, but on the higher time frame, similar to um, you know, a distribution schematic. Um, but if we go on the lower time frame to try and make it look a little bit cleaner, don't get me wrong, if you're looking for these um, schematics, they're probably not always gonna look clean. Um, but what I was looking for was because this is a distribution schematic, but it hasn't really um, took any price action. Obviously, you've got some highs here, we've got a little tiny wick up there. So I thought, okay, I want to position myself in for a sell. We've broken this low. Okay, so where can I position myself in for a sell? I don't want to get into here because obviously we've got rest and liquidity above these highs. Target for smart money, obviously. So I thought, right, where's the last structure break been? So we've got this high pushed in this low. Okay, we've got this nice institutional candle that was on. We've got this nice, clean institutional candle that has actually rebalanced a bit of price action. Okay. So my initial entry was highlighted this area. So I highlighted that area for obviously potential entry. Um, so potential entry that area. Okay. Now I thought obviously we've broken structure here. We've now broken structure here. 
potentially I'm going to come back to this area, okay, because we've got highs. So where's the next POI above? All right, so I'd set my limit off, off this open here. And we did actually clap, but understanding now where we have reacted from, actually, you know, it's actually helped. So we've clapped, all right? Trade it, stop loss, 1% gone, not a problem. Okay, we don't win them all. But understanding what happens during the London session and the manipulation of the lower time frames. Okay, this area here, which I should have looked at, to be honest with you, but never mind. So if I just mark this area up here, we'll go on to the lower time frame. So we'll go on to the five minute for now. Go on to a lower time frame. Well, Johnny talks about these manipulations all the time. And, uh, you know, when you see them, you can get in, in, in amongst them all the time. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a manipulation here. So we've got London open and price, right? So London open and price at, you know, 8 o'clock. Okay, so we've came down, pushed price above these highs. But then I just an order floor down. Okay, so we have actually in this area somewhere we've bought, which I'm potentially thinking here, we've bought here, took these highs to then sell down. So we can see I've obviously I've put my horizontal ray on there. If we go back onto the higher time frame, we have reacted from the area nicely. So you know, stops just above the highs, 15 pips on there. Price will always visit from a London session. But what I've noticed with back testing this as well with John Fibbs, a London session, a New York session, they often mitigate cells or fill in balances in. Um, you know, you're probably gonna have to go into your lower time frames and understand that yourself. When you're doing that, make sure you understand the higher time frame bias and you're trading in that direction. You're looking for a setups and you're looking for a cell set up in a selling environment on the four hour, selling environment on the one hour, okay, to confluence with the, with the lower time frame. Um, but if you back test this, you've got some time this weekend or whatever, definitely look for this. Um, I'll, I'll bring this up now as well. So, John Fibbs, London and New York open. Uh, inputs, you've got obviously London session, New York session. This NYSE is for um, equities open, the, um, the stock market and stuff like that. But obviously, I don't really need to be trading that at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so that's where we are with GJ. Um, obviously, it was a shame I hit stop loss, but I understand now where I've gone wrong. You know, it's in the journal, um, you know, so potentially as well, guys, I'm, you know, I'm calling everything, you know, we're looking for the sell now on this. You know, we are still in bullish price action. I've just seen that we've broken this key bit of structure that pushed in this new high. It has a cause and effect. This area here has caused this break of structure. We've closed below it. It could just be another one of what we've seen on the four hour, potentially just dip down, dip down, dip down, take liquidity and run, um, you know, but I can only position myself into positions that I see at that current time. Um, now for Euro USD, um, if we look at on the daily, okay, so the daily, you could say, you know, this is bearish price action, okay, but because this low, all right, we haven't broken this high, right, but because we haven't pushed down below this low again, we're potentially looking for a buy, Okay, if that makes sense. So we've got a lower high. So what I want to cover as well, guys, is the structure. So on the higher time frames, this isn't, you know, obviously we're, not, we're bearish on the higher time frame. We've got this extreme up here. We've got this extreme up here. Okay, we are not now bullish now because we haven't broken this low. Okay, this is just this is just all noise. We all need to really be paying attention where we are. Where was the last point of supply? So supply up here, you know, demands up here retracement, supply. Okay, so understanding that, right? So if we go on the four hour, understanding that we'll potentially be looking for a buy. You know, price action's bullish here. We've got this breaker structure. So this was the last uh, higher low that pushed in the low. Now we've broken that. So that's now confirmed that we're bullish price action. Okay, we've gotten to our extreme. I haven't really broken that. So that is now telling me that we're on a retracement. So if I just put that into perspective, okay, so if I was just to do, this is just a retracement to our slingshot area that's pushed price in. 
Okay, does that make sense? So bullish price action. Okay, to this extreme, this is just a retracement. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it is bearish order flow, but I am now looking for potentially get back in with the higher time frame now, which would be potentially be a buy. But I'm not just going to position myself in straight away. I want to look for a break of structure. Okay, so if we're looking to where we are now, we've got this this lower high. Yeah, it's pushed in the low. I haven't broken it on the four hour, but if we go down to the one hour. We have closed above it. Now, I know this price action was during uh, NFP, so you don't know if you really want to cause it a structure break. We have closed above it, so potentially, in my eyes, you know, that is a structure break. Now, you can't write this stuff as well. London session, break a structure, come back, mitigate. Yeah? I just like to have these on all the time. I just like to see where the price is reacting from. It's easy to see. Um so obviously, if we're looking now, uh, we've broken structure on the on the intraday time frames, uh, potentially looking bullish scenario on the, on the daily time frame as well. Um, so I want to drop it down to the lower time frames now. I'm gonna get into the 30 minutes. So personally, before I get into a buy on euro, I would like to see this area get broken. Uh, definitely, I would definitely like to see this high get broken before I get into a buy. Um, I'm gonna probably see and wait wait to see how we react around this area. Um, you know, if we could get onto the five minute, you know, we have, you know, but the lower the time frame now. So this was the lower high that pushed in the low. We've clearly broken above that. Okay. But for me to confirm, you know, a bullish environment, because we are still in bearish order flow coming into LPOI, um, you know, I'm potentially going to just wait for this high to get broken. And then I'm going to see if I can position myself in. If we don't, if we fail to break this high, then, you know, we are still bearish. Um so I'm just going to keep my options open at the moment with that. Um, AUD USD. Um, I don't even know what I had for. I can't remember what I had for that. Also AUD USD. That was right. So understanding these manipulations. Um, understanding. Yeah, so uh, so these manipulations that Johnny talks about all the time, I actually back tested these a bit myself. Um, so I've got this area here. So the eye is easier to see when you haven't got them on the replay mode. Um, you know, but if you can come on the chart between half seven, eight o'clock in the morning, you can tend to see that price will stall out before London open. And then you'll just get a big wig up to the upside, big wick down the downside, and you can position yourself in for a sell. It's just a manipulation capture some liquidity so they can then move off pardon me, in the desired direction. Um, so yeah, so we're looking on the on the five minute chart. So we've got London open and price, okay. Down a little bit. And then, so we've got London open and price here. Okay, so we've came down, we pushed past this low some sort of institutional candle down here you could so you could speak you could say okay we've came back london open and price short position cover the high six pip stop loss target the low you could even target further down obviously we can see the prices reacted from that area anyways um but these are just everywhere these setups now, how I would suggest doing it is if you were to go, obviously, find the currency pair you want to do. Like, you could just, one weekend, you could just do uh, Euro USD. Find, you know, your areas of, obviously, in this area, AUD USD at the moment. Um, you know, this is bearish order flow. So you can just mark up areas in here. So you can mark a box up there, 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 and just see where we react from. Obviously, because we're, tra we're trading the sell. You look for the sell in the, in the lower time frames. Um, so yeah, guys, anyone got any questions or anything? Because I say I haven't really got much. I've just been on a call with uh, one of the guys on my team, Dylan, just going over a few things. So I haven't really got much any um, you know that I'm looking at on the higher time frames. If I am looking at anything, it's going to be a, a London Open manipulation either tomorrow morning, Thursday, and Wednesday, um, Friday. So. I don't know what the questions are like after that. Just let me know.
No, mate. All good from my end. Appreciate you sharing that. Has anyone else got anything they want to comment on? That's all good. Imagine that. Yeah, that's it, Carl. You know yourself, mate. You know, you trade a lot of low time frames, so you're bound to see these on a daily basis, Carl. Uh, I've only just recently been seeing them. Um, you know, you trade supply and demand areas on the low time frame. I look for supply and demand areas in extremes, slingshots, structure breaks. Um, but yeah, man, you're killing it anyways with what you're doing, bro. So <laughs> keep grinding. Smashing stuff. I'll cover a couple of setups. I've got one on Euro USD as well. Uh, slightly different take on, on Jake's one. It is slightly different. It's more continuation really with the trend instead of looking for the switch over directly. Um, so yeah, it's always good to see different perspectives and that follow that through. So I reclaim the host and then, yeah, you know, that's it, Joe, mate. It's, it's all good at the end of the day. Even if you're new, mate, like, like I said to you on text a little bit, like some of this information, uh, you know, will definitely, it will be new to you. It will be new information. We're all, all in the same position, mate. Exactly that, man. We was all the same a couple of years back. And even, you know, even Cal, like probably six, eight, nine months ago, Callum was quite new to a lot of this. So you can pick it up really quickly if you dive into the education uh, and really go for it, man. But just being around on these calls and listening to the words that you pick up, even just hearing like break a structure, bullish, bearish, uh, trend, continuation. Like once you start to understand the lingo, that's that's half that that's half of it really. I think that's definitely the, some of the hardest bit because once you get those those words down and you understand what people are saying, then you start to paint the picture yourself. Um, so yeah, GPJPY uh, is a setup that I actually got into today. Can you see this all right, Jake? Yeah, you're good, bro. You're good. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, we can start out on the daily, just taking a look at this, what GPJPY was doing. So, yeah, previously on the on the daily, we have been predominantly uh, bullish, but we have started to see a bit of a transition now. And this is a lot more clear as we go down to the four hour. So this was me just following for a trade, which was basically in a continuation of, of where it was going. So I was looking for a bearish setup to the downside. So that's what we can see really within the four hour. You know, we're seeing these sequence of lower lows, you know, lower high, lower low, lower high. And we had this low, low break on there. And then we had the push back up. So, you know, you could look at that. We did have a break of structure on here to the upside, but we, we reacted from an area up here, which is where I was looking at. So coming into the hourly, this was the area that I was looking at up here. And if we took a fib on the four hour, so this is like a, a retracement tool that you can look at putting on your charts where we could start to pull it up from the highs down here. We can take it down to the lows of that move and then we can look at the retracement level back up. So, you know, this is 100 percent of the move. This is where it's you know pulled from here to here. And then we look at the percentages coming back up. So 50 here. This is halfway between this fib. 618. This is a level just above it, which is basically covering 61 percent of it. So, you know, long story short, we got a reaction off the off the 88 percent of that and we played quite nicely into this area. Now, if we scale it uh, into the hourly now, we almost did tap into you know, not quite an area that we usually look for on an institutional candle. More often than not, we're looking at, you know, the opens or the 50s, but it's played into almost the low of that of that IC candle there. And we've had a reaction away from it. And sometimes even within trading, it's just just good to observe what structure is doing, not getting so obsessed with what I see candles are, are, are doing. Yes, that you know they, they they can be important and they're good to look for, uh, but sometimes I just like to see what what the structure is doing. So that area was definitely left open there. You know we had the lower lows, we had this pullback up here. Yes, you could have seen this break in structure, but we're still playing in this four hour downtrend here. So we had the push up and then as price sort of made its move around that area, I managed to basically get in, you know, on the 15 minute because price was pushed up here. And we had the break of this structure here, break, low, 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 high, come back down. 
and then I took the entry. So, yeah, price is moving quite nicely on this at the minute. We've got some downside targets that we, we can be looking at, definitely. Um, so I'd like to see at least come down to this low here. Obviously, we can be making, you know, a lower low, even down to the extension, of course. So, yeah, that was a trade that I took on that. Covered the risk on it at the minute. So, obviously, we had that stop loss above the highs. We brought that down to there. And this is, you know, it's trailing quite nicely now. So that one's GBP, JPY. And then I was looking at Euro USD as well. Uh, and just, yeah, just following the trend through really on, on this one for me. I definitely do see what Jake is looking at on this. Uh, whereas, you know, we've obviously, long story short, most of this has been downtrending on Euro USD. And we did have a temporary break of structure. You know, when we had these, this lower low down here, we started to break here. So it took out those highs, took liquidity, shifted to a high high, come back down, swept the liquidity. And really from there, I think this is something that potentially did catch me out, um, not even a few weeks ago. It was probably even like last week now, uh, where we did have that break, that come down, that grab liquidity into there, covering that area. I thought we was really going to get the shift because this is almost somewhat textbook, but that's the thing with it. It's so textbook, ends up catching people out as well. So a lot of people would have been loading up with, from buy orders in here, come up a little bit and end up getting, you know, snap, smacked back down. And this is, this is why we've got such a push in this area here, because you can see that this is, you know, this, this, this selling, this selling pressure here has happened quite quickly. And that's because people have been loading up in buy orders down here, taking this long. And that's why we've had a grab of that liquidity where lots of people have been taken out of buying orders there. So, yeah, what happens, you know, fast sometimes doesn't always last. So we've had that grab and now we're having the push up. So I'd like to see the continuation on it. So I marked out an institutional candle up here. Very, very simple. We want to get into an area uh, which makes sense for us to take trading opportunities while we're getting a discounted area uh, for us getting into a trade. So. That's an area that I'm going to keep an eye on, see how it reacts around that. And likewise with what Jake is looking at as well. He's keeping an eye on that area because he knows it could have a reaction back down. So, you know, he's probably waiting to look for that break now to come back down or to even just take longs around here. So, yeah, and that's obviously me looking at and correlating with what the DXY is doing. So if you've not seen the DXY before, we're basically just looking what the US dollar is doing. And we can compare this really nicely, um, almost on an opposite side to what Euro USD is doing and what GP USD is doing. So, yeah, I'm seeing this on the daily, you know, very bullish. Upside targets are still there, trending, trending nicely, you know. So in the short term, I could see us attacking that and then up to there. Uh, so this is, you know, this is grinding up at the minute. Had the liquidity down there, had a bit of a draw. Uh, now we're pushed up a bit higher. So it'll be good to see this come down maybe a little bit further and then start reacting to the upside on that. So yeah, as long as I'm seeing the DXY is still bullish, then it still really does allow me to uh, you know look at these in a certain way and see the setups because you, you know they happen across the board. You know, this has been selling off for some time. AED USD has been selling off. You know, NZD USD has been selling off, GU has been selling off. So, you know, they all fall in a similar alignment as well. And if you can get that correlation with a DXY, it can stop you from getting stung, definitely. So that's my take on Euro USD. Keep both of the opinions in mind, keep an eye on that area, and then we'll take it from there. So yeah, that that is pretty much me. I don't know if Callum wanted to go through anything or um just share anything in general. Um I've got um so I've got Euro USD set up pretty much in a similar area. Um which where I actually took my trade from this morning. Um but I'm I'm quite happily just sort of sort of show the, the reasoning for the area. So there's there's two there's two 15 minute POIs uh, on Euro USD. Um and I've also got a uh, something that I've, I'm looking at on gold as well. Um so I don't mind quickly running through those two. Yeah, fantastic, okay. bro. It'll be a pleasure. Um I've just put your host, so you should be able to share now. Yeah. Oh, mate, that's nuts. So you joined in March. 
three months ago you you jumped into FX. Yeah. Start, well, yeah, because I, I, when I joined in March, I started with HFX. Yeah. And I did nothing else. I just all I did was HFX. And then it was about three months ago that I, I got into Forex. Um and I've, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've absolutely hammered it <laughs> for a lot of hours in. Um, you know, not not everyone's probably got the uh, either the spare time. I mean, not that I had the spare time. I was doing, I was, I was up training until one, two in the morning sometimes. But you you, you do what you got to do, don't you? So yeah, that's it, bro. Um, you do what you got. I just I just seen everything that was available, like everything there's on the platform available. So just why not smash it out and get through it? So, but yeah, so I, I trade, uh, I trade institutional money as well. Um, or from an institutional standpoint, but I'll, I've I've sort of got my own way of trading it. In part of it's part of Wyckoff theory that I use well, but even though I don't I don't understand it like Jake does, I don't I don't need to. Um, but I basically follow just it's all the flow of supply and demand, like you know, like you mentioned. So I always like to um, I always like to have a quick look. Like I'll the way I look at a chart, I'll start on the weekly, and I'll just sort of see what's going on. Um, and I'll sort of, you know, if prices come into a sort of main sort of POI here, so you can see on the weekly that we've had our last, the last leg of supply that's reacted before it's broke. Uh, this is where I, I look for basically flip zones from supply to demand and then return to that zone is where I look to get new trades. So although this is on the weekly, like this is quite a strong flip zone because you can see for, for, on a weekly basis, we've had this really strong supply chain coming out here. And then we've hit demand, which has broke this entire supply chain and took all this liquidity out. So this is a really important area for me. Um, so I was when I was looking on Euro uh, USD, I had this marked up. So I know that we're coming down bearish. So I'm expecting a reaction off here. So I'm basically looking for places that I could potentially get buys off from this area. Um, obviously, that's a weekly POI, which is massive, but it just basically gives me an area to start drilling down um, where to pick further POIs on. So basically. The, I don't know if anyone looked at it, but the, the four links that I put in the group the other day, that was this area on Euro USD where I basically uh, I refined down into a four hour and a 15 minute POI from this area. And that that one wick, um, I've, obviously I've deleted all drawings now, but basically where that weekly POI, which is this coming over, um, the 15 minute zone uh, was basically where it, it sort of wicked into on this side. Um, and you can have a look through those anyway, but... So we've come into this weekly area. Um, we've had a reaction, which was this point here, and this is uh, this is why like when we've come down, we've we've basically mitigated further in the weekly POI because obviously with it being a weekly POI, you've got a lot of POIs within that to mitigate through. When we've had a reaction, what I then like to do on the four hour, um, basically the four hour and the fifteen minute are my two main time frames that I, I base all my structure off on. So I like to look at the weekly just to sort of see what's going on, if there's any interesting areas. Um, I'll basically look at the last candle that's happened to see whether it's weak, whether it's bullish or bearish, basically, just to give you an overall idea. I don't take any notice of highs or lows in the weekly normally. Uh, it's just usually the last candle. I then come down with four hour uh, and I'll mark my four hour, my four hour leg out. So on here you can see prices come down. This is the very bottom, which is obviously the lowest low. Um, you can see prices come up, made this. This higher low. Now, the reason why I've got this lower low so marked here is because when NFP went down into this area, it, it technically it's created a lower low. Um, sorry, a higher low to then make a high high. When we but we've only whipped above this high and not closed. So obviously, prices continue down. So because we made a higher low, we've come in. So now this is now my four hour rate. Well, sorry, my four hour leg, which I'm now looking at as my fifteen minute range. So once I've got that marked out, um, I use I use the fib tool. I've got a different. I don't actually use conventional fib. I just use this to mark my basically my my zones out where you know you're getting you're either getting a good price or a bad price to buy or sell. So obviously in this pink zone, it basically marks the equilibrium out of the four leg out. So when I go down the fifteen minute chart and I re reset this chart, just I know there's a lot of drawings here. So between the two purple lines is my four hour leg. So I'm basically, this is the top half of the four hour leg and this is the bottom half of the four hour leg. So depending whether we're buying or selling, we know Euro's bearish, for obviously the lads have already spoke about that. Um, it's in bullish order flow at the minute on 15 minute, but overall it's, it's still bearish. Um, so, 
and that won't change unless we break this low or break this high. So that's what we're basically waiting for, the four-hour leg to break out. Um, so basically, we're looking for cells in this top half and obviously buys in the bottom half. Um, and this is where I got in. This, the very small one is basically, you can see on the chart, uh, I've marked pretty much the same area that um, Jake and Rory have both got marked up. Um, so this is, I've got this marked up as well because this is a valid POI. So you can see from the previous range. So like when I said I look for flip zones all the time, I look for the demand that's turned into supply that's respected. So you can see this is the bottom of that NFP wick. Um, so we've took, we've basically got a supply chain running from this bottom end into the bottom of NFP that's wicked into, it's reacted off. And then this is the last place that demand got respected before it got broke by this wick down here. So you see price actions come down, it's broke through this area. So it's now broke demand. Um, even though all this is supply, going back from the original order flow over here to create this up leg, this is all your demand leg. So you have to break. You're going to get reactions at previous demand legs. So when you've got when you've got a chart that goes up and then comes straight back down, all of the all the higher lows on this side, you'll get a reaction off the lower lows on the on the downtrend. It's always a good place to mark your demand zones out from this side. And it's where you can it's where you can expect a reaction off. So you know if you're expecting a pullback to get here to, to have a continuation to the downside, just look left and look for a lower low and mark your demand level because so if basically you all know, or sorry, I don't not, not all know, but the market moves order block to order block. So it's it's just basically where it's new institutional money comes in the market. So it's 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 where they're basically forcing the market down to then sell off or forcing the market up to sell off, sorry, or forcing the market up to then sell down. Um, and that just creates order, just creates orders and it basically, it makes the market look like it's selling off and then they'll buy up, you know, it's just basically, that's institutional money, if, you know, but if you, if you know about that, you know about it. If you don't, then it's something definitely worth looking into because it's, for me, it's the best way of trading um, personally because they control the market, so you might as well trade with them. So just coming into... Um, coming into this four hour leg now. So, this four hour leg is now our 15 minute range. So, every time you jump down a time frame, so if you now mark the most recent 15 minute range, which would be this high and this low, then that would be then I'd class that as my one minute range and my 15 minute leg. So, every time you move down a leg, obviously it's just a lower, whatever time frame. So, not everyone uses the one minute, someone might use a five minute. So, if you then go down to five minute, you'll be in a five minute range in the 15 minute leg. So, it just all depends on what time frames you use. Um, but you can basically see um, where I got in this. I'll show you this trade that I got in this morning. I'll just quickly jump down for one minute. Um, and, and basically what, what I was looking at and why I took this trade. So let me, let me get rid of that. Okay. Zoom across and then you can see it there. All right. So again, I always look for supply and demand chain. So where you've got, you can see a demand zone in another demand zone in another. Now these are all 15 minute, these are all 15 minute demand zones. Um, so you can see at the moment, we've got supplies being respected at each high and demand's being respected each low. So we're coming to a pivot point where either supply or demand's gonna fail. But the likelihood is, because we know from the higher time frame that Euro's on a downtrend, and we're also in the top half of the four hour leg. We should expect price because it's price is a, um, a premium, price should drop, it should continue the trend. And we're looking for sells up here, so that's that's where you pick your choice. And then you, I basically look for some form of liquidity sweep, um, which you can see we have here from that high point. Once we get this liquidity sweep, this what I then look for is basically the last reaction to demand. And then I mark my supply out on the extreme leg of that. So I know this might sound really confusing to people that don't know what I'm talking about, but I will try and show you very basically. Um, and then you'll be, able, you'll be able to see the zone that I'm playing off next and the reason for it. So where we've come down, this is this is where supply is being respected. This is obviously the last leg of demand, this, this blue bar. You can see the demand chain, it all links together. So this is the last time we hit demand before coming up, before we break this side. So what we've got is, if I zoom in here, I know it's all a bit small. 
So where we've had a reaction off here, you can see supplies being respected inside here. This long wick here, if you can see it. Obviously, this is one minute stuff, so not everyone does this. Where this wick has come down, it, it swept this. So we've now got a new demand chain here. As it's and where this has come down, it's respected the demand. It's broke this small supply chain here. It's come up, it's respected the higher supply, and it's come down and it's broke this demand. So now we've broke this demand. I now look to what where the, the, the extreme reaction was off this demand area, which is this small blue candle here. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, let me do that for two seconds. So it's it's this small candle here. So I mark my zone off there so you can see where we've got in, because that's the extreme reaction off the demand before it gets broke. So I'm always looking for price to return to that, that area, which you can see it literally does it just me in. Um, this is why I love Euro USD because there's hardly any spread on it. And at this time of the morning, I think it was actually you just see how I got put in that trade, and I think it ran to like some like 17 hour or something. I think um where did it run? Yeah, I got it in 1635. I did take a partial around here at nine and a half percent uh and left the rest to run. So I think I took 12% of it all together. Um, but yeah, I mean it absolutely just melted away from that point. Um, but this is like this this type of trading, you'll see it quite quite regular from these these pivot points if you like um it will drop so the reason why i was pointing this out here is the poi that jake and um and rory both mentioned is is this is basically this 15 minute zone here which is where i've got enough so this 15 minute zone is is basically where price actions come down it's the one that's broke this demand which hit this lower demand. Let me just pop back out to the 15 minute and you can see it a bit there. So, and you'll get why I was, why I basically went through that there. So you can see that's, that's the trade that I took there down to this demand. So we broke through this, all this demand chain, obviously after it's respected that, and then I've took my entry off this and it's broke through all this demand chain. So this is the first place that breaks the demand chain. We've come down and respected this. We've done, we've messed about. We know we're still in a downtrend because we've just created a new lower low on this side, twice, lower low, high low, lower low. Yes, now 15 minute structure is, is bullish at the moment, but we know we're still overall, we're, we're downtrending on the four hour. So the reason why I'm explaining all that is we know the first place that breaks demand, I always trade back to the point of the breaking of that demand chain. Now it's respected this demand here, but then it actually it even came down and broke this this big this four hour demand zone. So I, I was like, I've marked this area out because we might only get a shallow retracement, which will bring us to the equilibrium with a four hour leg before continuing to the downside, which is why I've got this 15 minute POI marked here. Uh, and you can see it has had a small reaction off that zone, uh, which is obviously this I C candle, which again is the reaction of this demand zone. It's the extreme reaction off this demand zone before before breaking it. So this this is a valid POI. You could short from here. Um, it all depends on how you trade. I like to see a reaction and then I'll drop down to well, so where we've got a reaction from a fifteen minute POI. Personally, I would now drop down to a one minute chart. And now I'm now looking for a break of well, a, basically a, a change. What I class as a change of trend, which is which is basically Wyckoff theory, which is taking the high and taking the low, or sorry, taking the low then taking the high and coming back down, um, or it's, it's part of Wyckoff, should I say, which is the only part of Wyckoff that I understand. <laughs> it's all I, uh, it's all I, it's all I use, which is basically just gives me the knowledge that price is going to start going the opposite way. So it's not the same as a break of structure. It's completely different because you're, you're basically taking the liquidity from one side and the other before, before a continuation, which is why it's clusters. Which is why I class it as Y cost, should I say, because you're basically sweeping both sides before moving. So I'd be I'd be looking for a change what I class as a change of trend in here. Um before before looking for a long. Um one thing I will say, and I'll and I'll go into this when I quick, I'll just quickly show you gold off this, but this is this is where you can see where I've entered. This is the wick. So that's the 15 minute supply. So it could quite easily drop from here. I'll still mark this one because this is still my favorite zone to, to sell from purely because it's deep in the four hour leg. This is sort of pushing it right in the equilibrium. It's not something I particularly like. And I also, I don't always trust the very first touch of a POI because you're quite, it's quite likely to mitigate deeper. 
um because you'll have uh like smaller one minute POIs further up in, in the legs so where you know instead of leaving it doesn't always make a game it will do it a later date potentially it might not do it right now um but yeah, it's just something to bear in mind it's like like this is a prime example of PLO. so this POI here it came in it touched it, it dropped off now loads of people will start selling here and they'll push back up and retake this and mitigate into this PI a little bit higher so you just never trust that first touch in any sort of 15 minute POI or bigger um, you can always potentially expect a second touch. It doesn't always happen, um, but it's just something to be wary of, especially if you just whip in uh, like to the bottom of a POI. It's not something I trust. So I'll, I'll wait till um, I'll wait till you know you either get something on the fifteen minute if that's what you want to look at, or you could even look at the five minute. If you know, it, dep it all depends on what 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 preference you. Do. If you struggle seeing one minute structure, but you want to use the lower time frames, a good a good trend is basically look for the look for the basically the last law on the five minute. So if you wanted to, you could basically take that law. So wait till that gets broken, then look for a POI up here before getting in on the one minute. Is is a very very basic. Don't take that as gospel, but it's a basic rule of thumb to maybe back test. You can maybe go and look at back testing that. Look at some sort of like five minute structure to get broke to then get in. So wait for price to come down in here. Use that as a breaker structure. Uh, and then look for an entry only one minute up here somewhere is is a is an easier way of doing it. So yeah, so as in Fury USD, I'm looking at shorting from this area, but I will keep an eye. I, obviously, time of night now, we're probably going to miss what's going to going to happen here. But that it is what it is. Um, you know, if if we come down, we break this law, then again, I'll just I'll do exactly the same. I'll start marking my, my demand zones where we've got reactions off here. Um, so these will all get pulled across. Um, you know, start start marking demand chain out. Obviously, this is all demand chain that's built up here before it's just sort of shot off and it hasn't returned anymore. So we'll, when this comes down, we'll get some sort of reaction off this level, like, you know, and then if we come down and we break this law, then we could basically look for the supply off the flip of the demand to then carry on on the continuation lower to try and break, you know, into this uh, demand zone further down. Uh, and then eventually try and, you know, this is what we're, you know, this is the bottom of the four hour leg. At the end of the day, we're in a bearish market. We're aiming for this low down here eventually. Um, that's, you know, but well, that's for more for swing traders. I'm just a, just a day trader. So I only, I'm in now. I like to get in and out in a couple of hours if I can. Not always the case, but, uh, but yeah, that's, so that's your USD. Uh, this is, I, I believe, marking your four hour leg out and putting this fib tool on or just whatever you do, you can use the GAN box and, just put a 50% on so you know which is the top half and bottom half of the four hour leg. It's just a, it's a huge tool uh, to use. And if you're marking 15 minute POIs out, like if you're trading from a 15 minute POI, your, your TP should be the next 15 minute POI. So don't look for like, obviously it's entirely up to you. If you're just, if you're looking for small ROI, you know, it could be like, you're just looking to the next law for 3% or something. That It's entirely fine. It's entirely up to you where you take your profits. Would try not cut your trade short, like basically what I did today. <laughs> I mean, obviously I was happy with my R, but like that trade where it's run to the bottom of this, and I, it should be breaking this because we're bullet, uh, we're bearish. So I could have run that down for thirty R today. Uh, quite easily could have left it in, but I'm not very good at holding trades. I don't. I like to get in and out. Um, I don't like to be greedy with it because obviously it could also quite you know quite easily come back, um, sweep this top and hit remitigate. This is a higher. A higher level so i just i don't like pushing it the way i trade but um everyone's different aren't they so that's euro usd anyway so i'm looking at the same areas as rory and jay and i'll quickly show you gold um purely based off um let me come out on the so on the 15 minute yeah let me jump out to the four hour really quick so again you got your four hour leg. So we've obviously, we've, we've come down and created high, low, high, low. So we've got the last high and low of the four hour leg. We've got our 50% on. Now, again, we're looking, gold's bearish. It's reacted off this. Um, we've basically got this, this 15 minute, uh, sorry, this four hour POI here. Um, we've got a reaction off. Um, currently, obviously, in a pullback, uh, I expect it to continue to break this low. Um, obviously, we need signs of that happening. So what interests me on gold is this current 
when you can see the supply chain that we followed all the way down here. So this supply hasn't been broke yet. We've had a little liquidity sweep, but we've, we've created these equal highs here. Now, this is the last supply zone, which is this basically this top candle. Let me zoom in a bit. And you can see, you can see we're right on the equilibrium of, of this here. Um, now, from a 15 minute standpoint, we've got these equal highs. Um, so obviously we've got rest of the credit set above here. Now, what what one thing I have noticed is because you've got the rest of the liquidity sat here. Now we've already had this supply mitigated, and then this is mitigated this supply, and now this is being respected. What what gold has a tendency of doing, and gold something I trade quite a bit. See this POI, you know, I was on about where a POI getting hit once or twice, sometimes even three times. See how it's only wicked into the very bottom. And what what interests me about this is see that big wick that's basically swept all that liquidity there. Obviously, this is a really wicky range. It's a bit, a bit odd for gold, doesn't normally do this, but where we've got this big wick that swept all of this, that 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 just stands out to me, just for just purely for the amount that I've traded gold. It's something I've traded a lot. So for me personally, um, I'm still bearish on gold, but I believe, I personally believe we're going to get into the mitigation up into this, into this higher zone, um, probably the extreme of this. Now it's not, this is again, this is just entirely my opinion. Um, but this is what I'll be looking for. Um, I, I believe I believe these highs will get took, and I think we'll hit the zone further up, which will bring me further into a premium, um, further into the premium of the four hour to th to then go to go low. So that that's basically what I'll be looking for on gold personally. Um, I know we've we broke this low, so this high is going to be this high is going to be respected. Obviously, it's being respected here. Uh, and then we're just going to see what price action does from here. But like I say, it's purely off my, my pure experience of trading gold. It, it doesn't like leaving stuff like this right behind. So it might just be a quick wick. So this is something that I will be setting a limit on and I'll just leave it. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it doesn't activate, it doesn't matter. If price goes without me and, it, and then price breaks this low, then I'll start looking for shorts further on. Um, I know obviously price here is, is is bullish, but overall we are bearish again. You know, I always stick with a higher time frame narrative. That that's a it's a massive, it's a massive thing. Otherwise, price could fly through and and, and I mean this is the very top of the four hour leg. Again, gold, it does what it wants. <laughs> so it's, it's you can't rule it out. Uh, but for me, this top side of this um having a third mitigation of this zone for me is the most likely out of uh, out of everything uh for a continuation to the downside. Um, and that's pretty much uh, pretty much it for me. So. I think make you two seconds. I've lost the meeting somewhere. That's all good, bro. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. All right, gents, appreciate you jumping on. Callum, thanks for going through those two setups, mate. Always do appreciate it there. So, yeah, let's kick on probably next week or see what's going on for Thursday and we'll take it on from there. So, yeah, enjoy your evening, gents, and we'll catch up soon. Always pass you later. Take care, mate. Bye.